Hello there and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are taking a look at the Healing Digital FPV and Remote Control System from the guys over at Profi CNC and Hex and in this video we're going to take you guys through connecting up the ear module, put the connections in place and what you need to do to connect it to your Pixhawk flight controller as well as look at what settings you need to change your mission planner to make sure that you're A getting HD video through this but B you're also getting the telemetry data show up on the display of the device as well. Now before I get started I'd just like to thank the guys over at 3DXR in the UK for sending this system over to us to have a look at. If you're looking for the Healing system or anything like your Pixhawk 2.1 please do go check them out. There's a link in the description of this video. Okay, so before we get started, I'm just going to take you through what the cables are that come with the device itself. They include a micro HDMI to micro HDMI for connecting to your camera. It is a little bit short. It would be ideal for some situations or testing. However, you might find you do need to get one that suits your needs better, but we're not going to need that right now. They also include an S bus cable, and this is a dual output S bus cable. And the reason it's dual is it, the unit does have twin S bus outputs. Now, I have found in my testing that only one of these is active so you will need to make sure you've got the right one in your flight controller and I'll come on to that a little bit more in a minute. They include a power cable. Now, as I mentioned in my first video, the Hulink ear unit works between 5 and 12 volts. So if you are using a larger battery system, you will need to make sure that you have a minimum maximum of 12 volt and a minimum of 5 volt available to connect up to the unit. And they do supply a cable with that. And the cable is simply just two ends ready to solder onto whatever you need to connect it to. The final cable is the telemetry cable. Now, this cable is designed to connect to the Cube Pixel 2.1 flight controller it uses the newer type connection that you have on here so if you are going to use this with an older Pixhawk you still can but you're going to need to change this connection on the end or get a different cable the one they supply is designed to work with the 2.1 or what is known as the cube finally in the box you have your two antennas which are the ones with the MMCX connectors so let's get on with connecting everything up and then show you where it all goes Okay, so taking you through the connections, before you ever power up your Hulink ear unit, you must have your antennas connected, which we have over here on the right hand side. So I always suggest making sure that you've connected your antennas before you do absolutely anything. Now these are MMCX connectors. Now if you've never come across these, they're very simple. They simply gently push in place until they give you a gentle click and they're all done. So it's always worth remembering that before you mount your antenna cables, make sure that you've got the pin in the center and just give it a gentle push and it's all in place. And it really is as simple as that. And the nice thing about MMCX is it will rotate as well. So it gives you the flexibility to move it around. It will come off and to remove the connector if you ever need to, simply put your nail sort of under it, give it a gentle tug and sort of a twist and it will release and it will pop off just like that. But again, I always suggest putting these connections on first before you do anything else. Moving round to the rest of the connectors, now what you have then is your power connector down here and again with this one nice and straightforward. On the one side you'd have your 5 to 12 volt and I'm going to connect it up to a battery to demonstrate that in a minute. And then onto the ear unit you simply pop the plug in nice and straightforward. and that's it ready to rock and roll. The next cable we want to connect is the telemetry cable and that is called the UART and as I said this is the one that connects to your Pixhawk flight controller. This one uses the connection for the Pixhawk 2.1 so on the flight side you would simply go into the UART and on your flight controller you want to put it into one of your telemetry ports. Now the Pixhawk 2.1 has two telemetry ports. If I spin it round you got telemetry 2 and telemetry one. Now you can use either of these ports depending on what else you've got connected. You would then just configure it inside of Mission Planner. And the configuration is very, very simple. You simply set it to Mavlink and I had mine set to 5,700 board rate. So all I'm gonna do in this one is connect it to my telemetry one port and I'm simply going to plug it in and that is it in place nice and easily. Last one to connect for the flight controller is the S bus cable. Now this one goes into the connector over on this side here. As I mentioned at the start of my video, whilst it is a dual S bus output, I have found that only one of them works. And on mine, it is the one on this 
far side here. So it is the connection for this one. So if you do connect your Healing ear unit up to your Pixhawk and you don't get SBUS output, make sure you have this on the correct one. Now on the Pixhawk 2.1, it simply goes into the SBUS port, which is called RC in down here on the left hand side alongside all of the usual pins. And again, when you plug it in, if you flip it on this side, you can see that they've got the type of signal. So you've got minus, plus and signal. So signal goes at the bottom. So that would mean yellow is signal and then black is minus. So we would simply go onto this port on this side over here pop him in like that and that then is the wiring as you would expect it with your yellow on the bottom. Now that is all you need to connect for the ear unit to communicate with the Pixhawk 2.1. You do still have your HDMI cable and then you can choose either HDMI 1 or HDMI 2 depending on what camera you're going to set it to. Okay, before we look at the Pixhawk settings, the first thing you're gonna to need to do if you're firing this up for the first time is actually bind the receiver to the controller because it will not have been done. Now, I've already done this, that's why mine's showing is connected, but I'm gonna show you how to do it anyway. Now, you simply go into Q Ground Control Settings, and then if you're in general, you click across on D to D info and it will take you to this nice spectrum display. You then need to press the calibrate button in the bottom corner and then it says please long press the airplane calibrate button for three seconds within 30 seconds and wait for a moment. Now to do this I then take something sharp and I've just got a wire here and I'm going to press and hold the bind button on the A side for about three seconds and then the message on the screen will change once it's bind. Communication regained. There we go. It's then said calibration succeeded. That means that my E unit is then connected to the remote controller. Now, if you've got a video hookup connected, you could then simply go to the front and see if you've got video. If you haven't, you might need to change some other settings. The way to tell that they are actually connected is that you will find the rate information in the top right hand corner starts to bounce around a bit and you get between 10 and 100 kilobytes. So that means then the ear system has then been binded to the receiver and you're ready then to hook up video and remote and anything else like that. Next, we're gonna check out what settings you need to do in Mission Planner to make sure that you do get all your telemetry data. Okay, I just want to show you in Mission Planner and Arduino Pilot what settings you need to make sure that your telemetry is set to. Now I've got it connected via USB on COM port 13, so I'm just going to hook that up and tell it to connect. Now, sorry if this looks a bit messy, this is probably the shiniest screen laptop that exists in the world, but it is my only Windows machine because I'm mostly a Mac man. Um, once your uh, Pixhawk has connected, you will need to then go into your configuration, and I tend to use the full pram tree, if I'm honest, I prefer to use that. Um, we're gonna go down and find our serial options. So we're gonna scroll all the way down, and find serial one. You need to make sure that it's set to protocol one, which is Mavlink, and set that to 57. And it really is as simple as that. So whatever serial port you are putting your Healink E unit on, you simply need to make sure that the serial protocol is set to Mavlink. So for this, protocol one, and the serial board rate is set to 5,700, which is 57 in this case. You could do it under the full parameter tree as well, if you wanted to do it this way. And if we go down and find serial, um, but I, I prefer to use, uh, sorry, the, the, the list, I prefer to use the tree myself, if I'm honest, because I find it a little bit quicker. But if we keep going down, uh, here we go, serial five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so in, in uh, full parameter list, it gives us a bit more info, but you can see serial one, which I'm connected to, is on number one. One is Mavlink one, and then the board rate, uh, for serial one is 57, which marks up for 5,700, uh, 5,700, which is the standard, uh, the board rate. Okay, once you have your Hewlink system connected to your Pixhawk 2.1 flight controller and you have configured Mission Planner to show you the correct settings, when you fire up your Pixhawk, it should then connect and show you telemetry data along the top of the screen up here. So I'm going to power up my Pixhawk. 
Once you are connected, you will see all the icons appear along the top. Then when you go into settings, you will have access to all of the settings that are within your flight controller. Now, because this is a beta unit, there are some things that aren't quite linking up 100% with the current Pixel firmware, however, with Arja Pilot. Um, however, it will give you access to all of the settings. So you have summary and joystick. And then if we go down to airframe, you can set that. You've then got your radio settings and that is not the radio settings on the device here but the radio settings on the flight controller itself you've then got the flight mode assignment you've got sensors power all of the usual settings you would find from with inside Q ground control when you've got it connected to the Pixel 2 flight controller. Now you can have a play with these with the Q ground control app if you want to you can just download it and connect it to your Pixel. So it gives you all of the same settings you're used to having on them. But again as I've said once you do have the telemetry data set up you do get the icons along the top. On the summary screen you can also scroll down and if you want to click on sensors you can actually go on to sensors tap that and then that will give us the, the screen for sensors so it also gives you the tab access as well. Another nice feature when you are on the home page with QGround Control is that you can actually tap each of these and get more information so if I tap that it'll give us a list of the errors now as it's a flight controller sitting on the side there's going to be absolutely tons. Um, if I click on satellites it would show us the GPS status, uh, telemetry, RSSI info so from the radio, control link info, battery info itself, if you click on the flight modes, it gives you the option then to change flight modes from on the screen. So if you want to do that directly on the screen, you can. So if I go down here to uh, sport, sport flight mode. simple as that. And then if I click it again and then go to stabilize, stabilize flight mode. you also then have the option to press disarmed. And then it'll give you the option to arm the vehicle if you want to do it as well. And then if you look on the side here, you have all of your normal values and everything. You can check out all of the menu systems on this in my other video, which goes over all of the menus, all of the features of the menus as well. And as I have mentioned a few times, please note this is a beta unit. This is not final. So anything you see here, A, may be subject to change, but B, will be dramatically improved upon as time goes on. Overall, that is how you connect the telemetry and the S-Bus connection on the Pixel 2.1 with the Hulink Air system and how you know it's connected on the unit itself. Thank you for watching. Please do check out all of my other videos on the Hulink system. I'm going to do a whole host of them that has taken you through pretty much all of the settings and features. Again, thanks to the guys over at 3DXR in the UK. I really do appreciate it. Please do check them out in the link of this video. Please do subscribe and I will do another one again soon.